So if we could not change the whole world, at least we change ourselves, change our environment, change whomever we can influence. You have to walk the way of Jesus. You must be the torchbearer. You must change. Please stay with us to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Master, is it important to be a vegetarian, to be enlightened? It is important. It is important. Uh, because first of all, we have to practice love in order to beget love. In order to be all pervasive, loving like our Father, we have to love all beings. And that is the meaning behind the vegetarian diet. It's not to be healthy or not because Jesus says so or Buddha forbid. It's just we have to be love reincarnate. We have to be the walking God on this planet. We have to live like God would live. So in order to be near God, God doesn't punish us. It's just light beget like. If we want to be near to something, we have to go there, the same direction. So God created all beings and let them die naturally. So should we. If we couldn't create, at least we do not destroy. The commandment in the Bible is, thou shall not kill. It didn't say you shall not kill humans only. It said thou shall not kill. <laughs> Anything killed is killed. What is your opinion on spiritual healers? Should or can it be done for a living, like charging clients? If it is, is it allowed? Yes, spiritual healing is very good. Very good for the patients. Not too good for the healer sometimes. <laughs> because she or he has to take on the bad karma of these patients. And sometimes it's very overwhelming. Because uh, spiritual healing is just one of the levels of God consciousness, yes? If we arrive there, we can heal people. Yeah, these people are very spiritually strong in order to heal people. Spiritual healers are very strong in their spirit. But in order to heal without healing, like Jesus did, we can go a little higher, much higher. Then we heal, you don't have to lay hands on people. Just like when somebody touched Jesus' car garment and she just healed. And, and uh, she thanks him. He said, no, it's your faith that heals you. He never claimed because he knows he's the Father. And he said, it's not me who do it, it's my Father. And that is the highest level of spiritual healing. Yes, we could be in many different levels. So it depends on where you are. <laughs> the greatest spiritual healers don't heal. It, they just get healed. <laughs> if it is God's will for that person to be healed through you, uh, he just get healed. The, the master, or for example, Jesus, he didn't do anything. Yes. That's why he never claimed credit. Yes, true master is like that. It's very humble. How do you teach your children this way of life without being ridiculed in everyday life? Yeah. I told you, people ridicule you even if you have a beautiful boyfriend uh, or wife. So why are you scared? Huh? This life has been led in the wrong direction for a long time. That's why we are what we are now. So if we could not change the whole world, at least we change ourselves, change our environment, change whomever we can influence. Uh, if our children want to lead to go this way, it's our duty to lead them, no matter whoever says. You have to walk the way of Jesus. People stone him, curse him, label him, crucify him. Did he give up his way? No. So, we are Christian, we are whomever, we walk the way of God.
All right? And we have to be an example to other beings. We cannot follow them because they're erring already. They're mistaken. You must be the torchbearer. You must change. And somebody else might change also. They might not accept at first, but they come home and think about it. Oh, this way is, seems to be better. And then later they say, oh, it is definitely better. <laughs> okay, I, I follow. See? That's why we still follow Jesus now, 2,000 years later, because that's the only way to live our life. We follow, but we don't practice. We should practice more. Yes. <laughs> is God within us? Is the subconscious mind? If not, what is it exactly? Yeah, God is within us. It's a consciousness. God also without us. God's everywhere. <laughs> God is yourself. I want to feel the power of God, but I don't know how. Can you help me? I want to be strong and faithful. Yeah, only when you see God, then you can be strong and faithful. You cannot believe something you don't see. I'm sorry. <laughs> I show you how to see God, then you can believe Him. All right? God is light. God is the love you will feel during the contact with Him, during your meditation, during the time that you reserve for Him. And then later, more and more, every day, every minute, you will feel His love. Even without meditation, even when you're walking, when you're driving, you will feel that you are one with that love. That's a wonderful feeling. And that's how we can believe. You see? That's how we can believe. How do you see that God is with you? And when do you feel that the Holy Spirit is with you? I feel it all the time. Mm. How do I know? How do you see? What I see, I cannot tell you, but I can show you that you can see the same. Yeah? Because uh, what I drink, you don't know. What I drink, you cannot taste. What I eat, you cannot feel full. But I can offer you the same meals, same f juice, then you can, you can understand. Yes? I wish God is a physical flower, I can show you. <laughs> but God also in the flowers. God is in here. You can see this is the physical manifestation of God's beauty. This is a physical manifestation of God's beings. Yours are the physical manifestation of God. So if you want to feel the physical aspect of God, then touch your neighbor, hug him, kiss her. That is God in physical realm. But if you want to see God in an abstract form, in light, in splendor, in heaven, then I have to show you in an abstract way. You understand? There are two ways, abstract and physical. Physical, you see already. Abstract, I show you. Yeah? Later, when we have time together and sit quietly, I'll show you. I will tell you what to do and where to see God. It's very quick. Yeah? How do I know? If I love somebody, do I know? If I sit here in Africa, do I know? To know God is like that. Very, very clear. There's no mistake about it. I just can only show you by yourself. But I cannot show you in physical because this is a different aspect of life. Okay? Yes. Master, I ask you to show us what is the right way of praying. Yes, I'll do that. I'll do that. That would take a couple of hours of explanation. But the enlightenment is fast. And you can experience every day the same. Or higher and higher. I'm here only for the one who's ready. How different is spirituality from your method? Is God with us or a part of us? How or what will our experience be during our initiation? You see God. You see the aspect of God, which is light, which is uh, different like melodies of the universe. The way he speaks to you is not in human language. He speaks in a melodious voice, like the sound of water. It's mentioned in the Bible that he speaks like thunder, like the sound of many waters. This you will experience, and more and more, because the Bible don't record everything. You have too much experience. You can write a thousand books, never enough. So one Bible is <laughs> It's not enough, <laughs> but at least there's some reference. Like Moses see God as big flame, yeah? St. John enter the third heaven and hear the trumpet, things like that. 
etc., etc., you will experience. You will know it. You will know it. This is not something we can describe in language, really. You just know it when God's presence is near or when you contact, when you remember again. He's always near. Just remember. Yeah. The world is in a crisis today. Wars, pollution, disease, etc. Have we collectively created this crisis just so we can experience greater glory? Yeah. But we could have done better now, since we know better. It was a mistake. Now we have to repair it. Yeah? We can't just continue making mistakes forever and say, okay, I'm creating all this so that I can experience heaven. Yes, <laughs> there's a part of creating havoc and there's a part of creating heaven, so we have to balance it. We can't continue destroying our world forever by for pollution, by cutting down forests and by warring each other. It's time to wake up. Time to wake up. We had enough suffering already. Master, what will happen when you leave this world? Will there be others to continue your lineage? Who will initiate the people? Who will be there to guide us? God, you worry too far. At that time, you will know. Okay, God will decide. God will decide whether there is someone to continue. And he will let you know. If you're ready, everything will be known to you. If you're not ready, even if 10, 100 master comes, it's no use. Yeah? If you're ready, everything will be known to you. Don't worry, okay? <laughs> Meanwhile, get initiation while I'm still here. <laughs> the master died, but the spirit doesn't die. So you be continue to be guided until you finish the journey. Yeah? Whoever are initiated by one master will continue with that. Doesn't matter if the master pass away. And the new one will come if God decides so. Yeah? In the Bible, it is written, repent from your sins. Then your prayers will be answered. My question is, how will God answer the prayer of a sinner? Your question is a little bit less complete than it should be. And this is the part when God talked to the people who kills a lot of animals for offering. So he say, who told you to kill all these she sheep and he bullocks to make offering to me? Your hands are full of blood. You should stop the killing of the innocents. Otherwise, when you pray, I will not answer. When you request, I will turn my head away. So that is in that <laughs> section. So actually in the Bible, it mentioned also that we should not even kill to make offering, less alone to eat. Yeah, because God created them for our pleasure, not to kill. Anyhow, if we repent, of course that means we repent doesn't mean we should feel guilty about what we did. Okay, we did what we did is a part of the game. It's a part of our process of knowing God. So now we have created enough of non-God actions. So now is the time to return to Godly action. So once we make this decision to stop of the ungodly action and return to godly action. At that time, God gives us the answer right away, like today. Doesn't matter how many people committed sins or whatever you did, you don't have to tell me. At the time you sit down for initiation, God will come to you, all the same. So that means if you repent your sins, mean you don't do it again, God will appear to you. He will today. If you sit down for a while later. In fact, some of you already experienced light here. Is that not so true? Can you raise your hand if you have? Thank you. My God, aren't you spiritual? Thanks so much. <laughs> See, first time in, in Africa, I told you, God is indiscriminating. He loves every one of us. As soon as you, you want him, as soon as you sincerely yearn for him, he's there. Even you don't meditate yet. Even I didn't even show you yet. See, God is all love, nothing else. Don't fear God ever. He always loves us. As long as we want him, he comes. He loves us. He blesses us. He graces us with all things in life, this and after. Should we kill insects, flies, cockroaches, fleas, etc.? It's better to make your house clean and do some prevention outside the house so that they smell, they don't come near. So you don't have to actually kill them. All right? Because... 
God doesn't punish, but your conscience feel bad when you kill something. You feel, oh my God, he's so little, so helpless, and I kill him just like that. Even though you don't feel it much, your conscience will awake at night sometime and feel something biting you, and that's the ant <laughs> or the cockroach coming, reminding you, maybe you, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yes. Can you explain what are dreams or dreaming? Okay. There are three kinds of dreams. Uh, one is a, some like a clairvoyant kind of warnings or prediction of the coming event for you. That is when you're in very deep, deep sleep and more aware of your future or the past, okay? Another kind of dream is that uh, whatever you wish in the daytime or you think of much in the daytime before you sleep, it will appear in your dream, just a leftover of the impression of the daytime. And uh, the last kind of a dream is just nonsensical, whatever, no meaning just collect all kind of garbage in your brain, and when you sleep, it's too full, it just like leak out, yeah? <laughs> in the Bible, we read that Abram's sons slaughtered animals for their father. Was it a sin? In the old time, people believed to make offering to God, all right? Even now, they still do that. They even uh, slaughter animal to offering to the God within their body every day. Anyhow, people have different way of life, different choices to know God. They choose to do it quick, they choose to do it slow. For those of you who really get fed up with this life and really want to know God, nothing else, then go get initiation, full, see? So you decide now which choice you stay with or which choice you continue or next perfection you choose, yeah? Next choice or stay with this choice. <laughs>